Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, the show all about music production technology. Uh, I am your host Rupert Brown and this week uh, we're going to be talking about freeze and flatten uh, of two very important commands and I'm going to give you the top three reasons why I think that they are important, um, important tools to utilize. Um, before we get started with that though, at the end of this video I'm going to announce uh, yet another little competition, so stay tuned for that, um, but now let's get started. First of all, talking about what uh, what freeze and flatten is, um, essentially what happens when you freeze a track inside of Ableton Live is it renders it down into a just into a, an audio wave file. So let's let's say I'm going to solo this first track here where I've got just a guitar playing. <laughs> That goes on playing. So uh, that's that's my uh, that's my sound. So let's say I bring it out four bars here, and that could this could be a a wave file or a or a MIDI file. Um, and uh, let's say I put some effects on it. So I've got a copy of Amplitude Three here. So with a slight uh, sort of an amp mod on there. So now if I want to freeze that, I'm going to second mouse button and select freeze track. And so what it's doing now is it's rendering out, rendering out an actual um, wave file of the both the track and all, the, all of the effects that are on top of it. Okay, so there's one, one effect in this case. Um, but so you see now it turns blue, which shows us that the, that the track is now frozen. So we can hear it. <laughs> So why do, why do we want to do this? Um, the, f the first main reason is for, to save CPU. So I've chosen amplitude here because it's actually quite, uh, it's well fairly, it's fairly CPU hungry. So you can see now um, uh, my CPU is on 1% on play. 1-2% because essentially it's not using this plugin at all, it's just playing a one rendered wave file as opposed to having to on the fly run all of your plugins at once. So if I unfreeze this now, um, you'll see that the CPU will jump up. So between sort of 16 and 18 percent trying to run this um, run this plugin and play the, the audio through it at real time. So CPU is the first main function. Um, so that's, that's freeze and um, so I'll freeze that again and now to f flatten the track basically what that does is it changes it into our frozen track becomes the, the, the audio in here and we lose our, lose our plugins. Another, another cool thing about when it's frozen is it still, live still gives you uh, a level of flexibility. So let's see if I loop this up, I can still adjust the volume, I can still adjust the pan, uh, I can still do sends, I've got no effects loaded in, but you can still do the sends, and you can even um, you can even still edit, so I can um, command D to duplicate certain pieces if I want, I can go right in here and cut pieces out, and um, paste bits in. So, jumping in. Didn't say it was going to sound good, but you, <laughs> you can you can go in and uh, and edit it while it's still f still frozen, and you still have the um, that kind of rendered sound of the plugin on top. Another useful um, use for the freeze function is if you've got um, a either a long note or an effect. So, for instance, here in this this next track down here, I'm going to just solo this next track, and I've basically taken a a sample and, and I've put it inside of Alchemy. And I've slowed it right down, so I've got this one huge long note. Um, just let you have a listen. So yeah, basically what I've done is I've taken a uh, an audio sample and I've stretched it right out um, and turned it into this really long kind of a soundscapey type sound. Now that's all good and well, but Basically, because this is one note, one continuous note, for 
Ableton to play it, you need to hit the beginning of the note. So if I'm if I'm got a if I'm working on a track and it's got this long soundscapey part uh, running through it, if I jump to this part of the track here, uh, guitar going, I can't hear any of that. I can't hear any of that alchemy sound. It needs to start from the start and actually trigger the sound. So you can you can hear it in here. Whereas if I if I stop the track and try and start from that one point, because we're not hitting the start of the note, we're not getting any sound. So if I now select my alchemy track, right click and freeze track. Now we've got a a rendered wave file of that whole sound. So if we jump in anywhere, we can actually hear. we can actually hear the sound so that's that's really handy and so if I was if I was happy with that I would then right click that and flatten and that's uh, really fucking annoying okay so now now we've got this now we can jump in anywhere in our song and we'll hear exactly what this alchemy part's doing so if I was happy with the sound, I'd then hit flatten, and then we've got a, a nice long wave waveform, and we're not using up any uh, excess CPU because we're just playing a wave file instead of running that whole synthesizer. So that's for for jumping into long effects, and so this also works for effects. So if you might have a really long delay or a reverb or something like that, uh, and, a, and a big long tail on it, if you freeze it, then you're going to be able to jump in at any point. Or if you flatten it like this, you can then start doing um, things like, for instance, uh, I might want to push J to consolidate that, the Command J. So that's a, a single piece. And so I can now take that um, that recording and reverse it and start doing that as like a uh, as a kind of uh, a working build-in piece. So again, doing uh, reverse reverbs or something like that, this is going to be uh, a quicker, more effective technique than uh, if you do something like my original reverse reverb where I recorded it in into a separate track and then flipped it around. It's a lot quicker, uh, I can see now, to freeze and flatten. So finally, the third reason why freeze and flatten is so important is um, for random generators. So I'm going to solo this this third track here. I've got I've got a drum loop loaded in, and I've also got uh, some obnoxious <laughs> level of I've got a beat repeater and a super trigger here. So with plugins like these, they do they do quite a quite a good job, convincing job of um, sort of cutting up audio uh, on the fly, and. Um, I found with these things, you sometimes you get some great results, and sometimes you get some some really not so great results. Um, and as a, as a side note, I really recommend hand editing everything. If it's for a if it's for a track, um, put the effort in and actually go in and manually edit, as opposed to just throwing a beat repeater on something. If you don't um, really work the settings, it has. Uh, a fairly distinctive sound. You can kind of sound when someone's just throwing a, a beat repeat on top. Um, but anyway, so, but I do like them for for live. If you want to be able to bring something in just on the fly, then they're they're great like that. But um, so my point I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting away from is that because these random generators are random, sometimes the results they produce are great, and sometimes the results they produce are not so great. So let's say I've got these. Um, these repeat beat repeaters running through my track. Um, what I would suggest you do is actually record record your um, record your drums in. So I've hit arm here. I'm going to hit play, and it's basically going to go through and play my play my drums. Um, and so I'll just pull this out. Four bars with the glitch on them. And rather than just leaving them there with all the effects on them, we're going to freeze them. So what this now means that th this is frozen, it's rendered with those plugins out to a to essentially a WAV file, is they're going to glitch exactly the same at the exact same points in the track. So 
So if we just, for instance, loop a small bar, oh, command L to loop. So you can hear that's the exact same that's the, the exact same effect being applied. So when we're building our song, we can cut out all the best parts of what the random generators have created and delete the parts that sound like crap. So uh, it's yeah, it's a really good way for kind of refining things, and then you you can keep that cool sound, but then you know exactly what you're working with for your final track. So if I now, for an example, if I now unfreeze that, you'll hear that it's going to be it's going to be different around each time because depending on what the random generators decide they're going to do um, affects what what the obviously the audio outcome is. So when you've got something cool that you like, I would freeze that track. Okay, you can stop the audio to freeze it. And then flatten it. And so there we go, we've got a nice waveform. Um, we can see all the edits that it's, that it's put in. We can cut the bits in that we like. We can cut the parts out that we don't like. If it does do something really rad and sweet, then we can take that little glitch and use it in more than one part of the track. So uh, it, it really is handy. So that's, um, uh, there's, there's probably more talk than that, but that's sort of the three main reasons why I think that uh, Freeze and Flatten are really useful tools. And um, if you're not using them yet, you really do need to be. So there you have it. If you do have any questions on that, leave me a comment down below at the dspproject.com. As I said at the beginning of this episode, I've got some giveaways. Um, I've got t-shirts. Well, two of. I've got a, uh, a Bang Max for Live t-shirt. And that's, uh, that's a double XL, that one. And I've also got a launch pad t-shirt there that's got an Ableton Novation tag on the back that's a small so if you fit either of those two sizes and want one of these shirts just send me an at reply on Twitter saying I want Launchpad or I want Bang if you're not on Twitter then you can use the Facebook DSP project Facebook page which is right there um, and just leave the same message again I think that will just be a, a first in first serve job and uh, also I've still got some Ableton mouse pads if you're interested in one of those just hit me up on uh, either of the aforementioned places and uh, as I there's also another competition coming soon as well which I'm really excited about it's a bit more interesting than these ones it's something more substantial um, but I haven't yet figured out exactly how I'm going to give it away so I'm not going to spill the beans on it this week but stay tuned I think maybe as a Christmas uh, a nice Christmas wrap up we'll be giving somebody uh, a cool prize so stay tuned for that this has been the DSP project and I'll see you next week